Hello, everyone. At Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Happy Friday to you. Happy Friday, Sam. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad to see you two weeks in a row. It is very special. I, know. I love it. I, I, love I it. ask for nothing more in the world. <laughs> <laughs> same, same. <laughs> How has your week been, Sarah? It has been so busy, but I made it, right? I mean, you're, like, you're that's standing. What... <laughs> I mean, sitting, but you're standing. <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad to end the week with you. I think this is going to be a really awesome class. So, if folks don't know, today we is number two of our kits with the lovely Sarah Lovecraft. We did number one last Friday, which was our Purple Majesty kit that Rachel and I made for Sarah. And then today we made, for today's class, it was called Carnelian Birdies. <laughs> and it's basically full of Carnelian, full of beautiful Czech birds, tear cast birds. Sarah will show you everything. It's really yes. pretty. And Sarah literally made made this design take flight. So <laughs> we're, today's class is all about creating with the kit. So if you have the kit, uh, you can like mostly make along. We're going to jump certain parts just because there's a lot of loops. So we're in a lot of things to do today. Oh yeah. We're trying to, we're trying to squeeze in uh, three projects. We're going to mostly focus, I think you said, on, this, on the necklace project. Yep. And then, of course, make sure to go through the bracelet and earrings as well. I can't believe you made three pieces from this kit. Do you still have more beads? Like, what? How about? Look, at, I do. I have like a little baggie of my leftovers. Because ah. there's just a little bit left. Not a lot, but just a little. And I'm like, I'm saving it. Nice. <laughs> this is my you should. special bag. <laughs> oh, right. Because we also sent you some of the extra metal <laughs> options. Yeah. For the yeah. I was like, oh, I saw the bird in that bag. But like, we actually, you did use the bird in the kit in the design. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, yes. Here are, oh, let's see how prepared I am today. Screen share. <laughs> here are the projects we're heading towards today. We've got three pieces here. And I think they're stunning. So that's, Thank that, you. is that a two strand <laughs> necklace, Sarah? It is. It is a two, well, so you guys know how I, if you've taken classes with me before, you know how I do. It's a faux two strand necklace. Like the whole thing is not two strands because I just, I like to fake it all the time. Oh, no, I, I that's yeah. what I do too. I think yeah. that makes a lot of sense. We're like, you see two strands. That makes, yeah. I didn't think, I've never even thought of it as faux two strands, but I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. It, it feels, but it looks like two strands, though it's two strands. <laughs> <laughs> I think it qualifies as two strands for sure, but it keeps you from getting all the tangling that happens because it does it does come down to a single strand of just um, some faux suede lace in the back. Lots of fake, oh. we got lots of fake things going on here. <laughs> <laughs> or leather, whatever it is that you want to use, it will come down to a single strand, and that just keeps you from having that that issue where things can get twisted and tangled up and and you still have a really cool stuff in the front and it doesn't waste a lot of the material so you have all of your pretty beads in the front where they're going to be seen and then in the back you can really just kind of use whatever whatever's really comfortable and that's sort of mm -hmm. why i chose the um the suede because it's really really comfortable to wear hmm. i love the tassel i think it's stunning and looks like it takes some patience. <laughs> <laughs> little bit. We're going to do a lot of little loops today. <laughs> and then with this lovely bracelet technique, I, we're going to get to see, explore some wire wrapping on leather, which I think is a great finisher for this class. Yeah. Yeah. And then we've got some cute little earrings using the carnelian clovers. I think those are darling. Yes, I love those. Love that bead. Those are so pretty. All right. You said you wanted to start with the necklace? Yep. Okay. Are you gonna make a long today? Today I didn't work out. I'm at the I office all day today. Do it. I, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I was Man. like, I was trying to squeeze in a twelve hundred things before leaving town tonight. <laughs> I was like, I don't think I can go home right now. <laughs> we forgive you. We forgive. I forgive you rather. I forgive. I do. You. I do promise to make from this kit because I love your ideas from it. Well, I I want everybody to to be prepared. Like I said, we're going to do a lot of little loops, but I did a lot of these ahead of time. And uh, so we're not going to do every single one of these simple loops, but 
I want to tell you, this project is going to be a, a great practice project for those simple loops. Simple loops is one of the things that I hear the most that people struggle with. It's probably the mm-hmm. number one thing that people really seem to have problems with and get mad about and sometimes just don't ever do them at all simply because they don't turn out correctly. And I'm here to show you uh, that (laughs) once you get them down, like once you've made as many of them as you're going to make for this necklace, number one, you're going to see that they're going to get better as you go. But number two, even if they don't, they're all going to cluster together. Nobody is ever going to notice what those loops look like. And you really can kind of give yourself a break. Okay. So that's the lesson in today's project is give yourself grace because the little stuff that we're not going to sweat the small stuff. We are just not going to let those things bother us. Um, But we do have a lot of simple loops to make today. And even though this necklace is full of simple loops, there are some other lessons in here that I think are going to be, they're just small things that a lot of times kind of get uh, pushed to the side when it comes to classes. And I want to really kind of focus on those things. You'll notice there are jump rings at the end of these strands. This is part of our tassel. We're going to get here in just a second, but there's a good lesson here about the jump rings and the hows and the whys of why these are part of the design. Um, So it's going to be some of the smaller elements outside of just the simple loops that I think are going to be some really good takeaways from this project. Plus the fact that the beads are beautiful and the necklace ends up being really, really pretty. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I should add, Sarah, I realized I didn't even give folks the update on this kit that we sold this out because we had it in gold and copper and both sold out Rachel tried to make some more and actually was pretty successful. So we did, re- we posted a version two of this kit that Sarah's working with today on the website. And I hope I put the right link in the post. I don't know if I did. Um, yeah, in the, it linked in this post is a collection of all this, is a collection that has the kit plus mm-hmm. some of the other supplies in the kit as well. We weren't able to make more of last week's kit but we did add a couple of the elements that were in it to the website which is also in that collection so if you're looking for some of the beads today uh just check out the first link in this vid under this video awesome yay all right well i feel so weird since you're not doing this with me <laughs> but i'm we're sorry start... no it's okay it's totally fine so we're gonna start with the focal <laughs> you're keeping me company that's all i could ever ask for so We're going to start with the focal and the focal is um, in the picture. It is. So all of these little strands, there's, well, there's six of these little beaded chains. Four of them are already done. Hold on. I'm sorry. There's five of them. We're going to put one of them together and then we're going to make our focal and then we're going to build the necklace around that. So we're actually going to start here with these. Now, each one of these are the same amount of, it's the same amount of beads, but the difference is the amount of jump rings. And again, we'll talk about the the why of that here in just a few minutes. But we're going to get started with the little, these little black beads, and then we're going to put well, we're going to do five of those, and then we're going to do three of these little star beads at the bottom. Okay, so it's kind of like, it's ombre, but it's not because it's not all the same color. But it's, you know, you transition from this color to the black. It all kind of works together. You'll see the flow with this is really, really nice. So one of the things I do want to talk about is my eye pins. And everybody's going to ask me, where did I get these eye pins? Um I don't know where they came from. I'm just going to go ahead and be completely honest with you. They were just in my stash, but I picked them because they're tiny. Look at this. They're very, very small. So when you're working on making simple loops with just a single bead, I really recommend trying to find these if you can get your hands on them. I'm sure that there are places where you can get them. I don't know of any off the top of my head, but it makes so much sense because if you're just using a single bead, there's not a whole lot of waste. Not only that, but you don't uh, you don't struggle with how much you got to cut. You're just going to cut a tiny, tiny bit off of this. In fact, if your bead was a little bit bigger, you may not have to cut anything off of it at all. So really the trick to this is going to be these, these short little eye pins. I just wish that I could give you a good source for them, but maybe Sam can hook us up one of these days because they're very, very handy for sure. 
Yeah, now I'm seeing that. That looks very, very helpful. <laughs> yeah, like, oh. it really makes a huge difference. And I know that, like, it, I, I originally was like, well, it shouldn't make that big of a difference, it, but it does. It really, it for more than just the the lack of waste. But I just feel like you're you're not dealing with so much wire. It just makes those loops come out differently. I don't know why. I don't know why it works. They say don't. Don't question it. If it's not broken, don't fix it. So I'm not going to. So we're using these tiny little guys. I'm going to put all five of my beads on those. And then these three, two of them are all, are going to go on these little eye pins as well. And then one of them is going to go onto a head pin. And that's what each one of the strands for your tassel is going to be made up of. So it's five of the black beads and it's three of the star beads. And you're going to have, uh, let's see, what? seven eye pins and one head pin. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and preload everything here. We're going to sit these to the side and we're going to get started with these simple loops. Okay, so it's also kind of nice that if folks don't have eye pins ready to go or an eye pin that matches the metal they want. Yeah, you of course can get out your maybe some German style wire and absolutely go to town. and I almost did that. I almost did it. And then I thought people will be so mad at me if I ask them to cut like 100 of them. <laughs> so I didn't do it, but you're 100% right. Like you don't have to buy your findings. You can make your own and doing, you know, doing eye pins is, is super easy to do. So and, and that way you can cut them really short if you want to, which is nice. All right, so the bead goes on to the eye pin, then you're gonna grab the wire right where it is exiting the bead and you're gonna make the bend uh, over the bead. So you don't have to bend the wire over the pliers. We're literally bending it over the bead itself because we're not doing any wraps. We don't need any of that extra room for that. We're gonna come in with our cutter tool and we're gonna trim off. Now these are already pretty short, so I'm just trimming off the tiniest little look, amount of the wire. What you're looking for is about a fourth of an inch of wire. If you're not comfortable with a fourth of an inch, you are more than welcome to use a half inch of wire for this. And you're gonna use your round nose pliers. You're gonna grab the tip of that wire and you're gonna roll back towards the bead and towards your hands to close that loop. And closing the loop is really important. You want to be sure that you get it as closed as you possibly can. Now, we're going to be opening it up again later, but that second time that you open it, when you close it, it's really important that you get it closed so that your beads don't come apart on you. That's the difference with your simple loops. Since they don't have the wire wraps to hold them, you got to be sure you've got a really good closure on them. So we're going to do that with all of these. You're going to get lots and lots of practice, like I said, of, of these simple loops. How did you bend that over so easily? Because I've never been able to bend wire over flush to do what you just did. So it's really, for me, I, I don't, I, I wish that I had like a magic, <laughs> some sort of magical way to tell you. It's really kind of weird what I do. So I hold on to it really tightly and then I do my pliers like this. I'm not going to do the motion, but I'm going to show you basically what happens with my pliers. I do this. You see how I'm just like, very quickly opening and closing the pliers on the wire. I do that as I'm bending the wire. And for whatever reason, it bends the wire. I've never been one of those people who can just do it in like one smooth motion. It just doesn't work for me. So I do this like chomping down. It's like I'm chewing the wire with my pliers and it bends the wire over for me. Which is kind of weird, I know, but it works. It works. And then I do my loops kind of the same way because I can't do a loop just in one turn. So when I come in with my round nose pliers, you'll notice that like I'm kind of rocking the wire back. Like I'm doing really small movements to get that loop instead of just like one turn. If I do yeah. one turn, my loop looks awful. So I do it in really small movements, just the same with bending it, bending the wire over too. So if you struggle, maybe try, you know, maybe try those steps instead of trying to do it just one and done. What you can see again where I'm like, I'm just barely opening and closing the pliers. And it bends it over pretty well. Now, if you've got a nice soft wire, you can do it with your fingers. Um, but one of the things that I find is that <clears throat> the shorter the wire is that you have at the top. So let's say you have a regular size eye pin and it's filled up with beads and you only have this much wire to work with. 
um, just like with these because they're shorter, uh, I find that I do have a little bit harder time getting that wire to bend to the side like that. Whereas if I've got a lot of wire, then I have a lot more leverage. That's interesting because I've never, I feel like I gave up on trying to bend my wire with my pliers. I was like, I got to be able to bend with my finger. And then sometimes if they're like, if my head pin is just too thick, like it's not going to bend. Yep. Just with my finger, at least not well, or it's going to hurt me or something. Yeah. So it's nice to see this idea for that. It is possible. Oh yeah. I, I don't like to do it with my fingers unless I've got a lot of wire to work with. Cause it, it's, it is painful, especially if you're holding like a little tiny bead for me, bicones are the worst. Like if I got to do a bicone and I got to do a simple <laughs> on it and I got to do a bunch of them, it's like, Oh my gosh, I have to like mentally prepare myself for that because it's a painful <laughs> experience. <laughs> it's like, we need like little like things on the, for the tips of our fingers. Yeah. Better. Cause like <laughs> you, my fingers get poked into by the, like, Oh yeah. Over and over. So with this, with the little star beads, these rice shaped beads, you don't have, you don't need to cut any of the wire. There's nothing to cut. You've got, you've got exactly what you need to make a loop. In fact, your loop's probably going to be on the small side, but it's still going to be a loop and maybe a small one, but it's still a loop, but you don't have to cut anything. If you, if you're using these little small ones, Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I had to fuss at the dog. When you have a moment when you're done with these, would you measure one of your eye pins? From yes. For us? Yes, yes, yes. All right, so I did all of these are the loops, right? On There's a loop on both sides. This one is on a head pin. It's just going to be a simple loop. So I'm going to do this one, and then I'm going to measure those for you. So bend the wire. And then trim off. And then round those pliers to come in and do your simple loop. Okay. All right. So, oh my goodness. Sorry. My friends. <laughs> All right. So these are, they're a little over a half inch. So what is that? Um, I don't math. So I don't know. <laughs> it's it's the, the next big mark after a half inch, <laughs> but not the biggest because that would be this one right here. But does that help at all, Sam? No. <laughs> Are you there? Is Sam there? Did I lose oh, you? I've been talking on mute. Oh, my God. Here oh. I've been chatting with you. La, 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 la. Um, <laughs> Oh, put it on the millimeters. I think that might be, that might help. Okay, yeah, you're right. You're right. My bad. Okay. Kathy says five eighths. Thank, Thank you, Kathy. You, Kathy. <laughs> okay, so it's just over like sixteens of the millimeters. Yeah. Okay, that's very helpful. <laughs> one inch is twenty. No, seriously, one inch is twenty-five millimeters. Yeah. Sort of. I think. <laughs> sort of. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Yeah. You asked me to math. See what happens. Yeah. Put us two together. Good luck. <laughs> all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put all these together to make ourselves a little chain and doing that is really simple, but you got to be careful about it because uh, you, you want to be sure that you're twisting these loops instead of pulling them apart. Okay. So what I mean by that is you want to treat each one of these loops like you would a jump ring in the sense that you're going to hold this in your fingers and with your pliers, you're going to twist it open. So you're not going to pull it apart to try to open it up. You know, you're going to twist it open and then you can twist it back. And that's going to help maintain that, that round shape. If you, if you just pull it apart, you're never going to get that round shape again. And if you're already self-conscious about your little simple loops, you definitely don't want to make them any worse by pulling them apart. So definitely it's a twist. You're going to do that with each one. So you're going to twist it open, thread on another one, and then you're going to twist to close. You're going to move up a bead. You're going to twist to open, add a bead, Twist to close, twist to open, add a bead, oops, and then you're going to twist to close, 
Okay, and now we're gonna add our star beads. So there's one of those. Okay, and then the last one is gonna be the one that's on the head pin. Okay, all right, so you've got one of the strands for what is going to make up our tassel. Now you need to do that five times. So you're gonna do five of these strands. That's a lot of little loops and believe it or not, that's not the only little loops for the simple loops we're going to do today. This is such a fantastic project for to watch to binge your favorite show with. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What what's that show for you, Sarah? Oh my gosh. So right now it's Naruto um and I'm I know I'm such a nerd, but I'm in uh Naruto Shippuden, <laughs> which is a funny word. I love it, but yeah, that's what and that's what I literally have been doing cuz there's like hundreds of episodes of the show okay yeah. and the show has been around forever in a million years i know i'm so behind the times but i can put it on and since it's not in subtitles it's dubbed I, or yeah it's dubbed. I, can, I can listen and work at the same right. time yeah good tangent i, I enjoy it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching i know what you're watching well, what do you I, think i'm watching you're always watching gray's anatomy always always <laughs> it won't watch itself <laughs> Okay, Back to so, the beginning. <laughs> that's me and Supernatural. I start over from the beginning and, and rewatch all of it. So, which is actually what Q and I are doing when we watch things together right now. But anyway, oh. I know. he He's never watched Supernatural before, so this is a whole new experience for him. All right, once you get all of these done, then we need to add the jump rings to the top. And I know that seems really weird, but it's necessary. And part of the reason why we need to add these jump rings is because all of our strands, right? Remember all of the beaded strands that we've made here are all the same length. Um, and we're going to cluster them together. They're going to be uh, all hanging from a single jump ring. Well, when you bring all of those strands together, whether it is in a tassel or whether you're doing like a multi-strand design where your necklace has several strands and you're going to be bringing all of those strands together, something that tends to happen when those strands are beaded is the top two or three beads, they tend to crowd each other out and it will make your tassel hang really funny. It just doesn't have the right look to it and it will make your multi-strands for your multi-strand designs kind of crowded and it just looks a little bit messy. So the way to avoid that and to give each one of the beads their own space is to add some jump rings. Now I've staggered mine because I want mine to hang at different lengths. However, if you want them all to hang at the same length, just pick the same number of jump rings to put at the top of each one of your strands. So what happens is you're clustering the jump rings together, which don't take up nearly as much space as the beads. And it gives the beads enough room to, to hang without crowding each other out. Does that make sense at all? I hope it does. Yeah, I'm <laughs> sitting here like in awe because that's the issue I always have. Yeah. Making these sorts of tassels is they get like bunch at the top. They don't know yeah. where the beads don't know where to go. Yeah. So and, and you don't have to use jump rings. You can use little pieces of chain, which ultimately mm -hmm. is what we're doing with our jump rings anyway. Right. So in you know in instead of using these you can use small pieces of chain but it also works for your your multi-strand necklaces as well. Um, the necklace that I did in my project my uh Feel Good Friday show today was like that. It was a three strand necklace, but each one had a little section of chain to kind of separate it out so that when they all came together to a single jump ring, everything had its own. It's like it all stayed in its own lane, basically. Mm -hmm. You know? Yo, right. By the way, I did see that that necklace totally sold out. But Sarah, I think, has some of her other kits from her weekly Feel Good Friday show in her Etsy shop. So you should yes, not wait because yes, yes. you're going to miss out on the next on the other ones. Yeah. And we had some really awesome, awesome designs today. So definitely go check those out. I believe the easiest way to get, I always, I, you can't search Sarah Lovecraft to get to Sarah's Etsy very easily. So I always search 13 Crows, which is the yep. name of her Etsy shop. Yeah. That'll get you there. 
All right, so for this strand, I'm doing two jump rings and you'll see this one has two jump rings and this one has two jump rings. So I have five of these. That means that three of them are gonna have one, two, three, four, five jump rings. Okay, so that's, that's how that's all gonna work out. And we're just gonna open and close these little jump rings, making ourselves, essentially we're making a little chain out of, out of jump rings. Let's go ahead and add another one to this one. Do you usually gravitate towards your bent nose pliers for opening and closing jump rings? I, not, it, honestly, it's just what I have on hand. Um, I, I normally have the bent and the straight always here on my desk. So it's just kind of out of habit. Um, but really, it's just whatever I can reach for. <laughs> Like, I don't, I don't really recommend one over the other. I just always have my bent chain nose pliers on hand because I use those a lot of times. Like, if I make a wrap loop and I'm going to wrap it directly to something, the bent mm -hmm. chain nose pliers, you know, are really helpful for that. So that's usually why I have them. But I'm going to open that one and add it to this one. Okay. All right. So now we've got three with five jump rings. We have two of them with two jump rings. And we're going to add these to a larger jump ring here. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up that jump ring and you'll see what I mean by everything having its own space when you add those little jump, jump rings in. So there's one, there's two, there's the other one, and I'm alternating, right? And you can see how those jump rings, see how that bead is sitting in between those jump rings there and it doesn't have to compete for space with another bead. So, Jump rings are very, very helpful for that. Or little pieces of chain or tiny beads. It's whatever you've got. So now everything hangs really nicely on this jump ring without crowding itself or without crowding each other out rather. Okay. So that's going to be the bottom part of your tassel, right? It's just going to take some time. Just be patient with all those loops. Watch Grey's Anatomy. <laughs> Put all that together. Okay. All right. So. There's that. I'm just going to sit that right here. Now, we're going to attach this to our bird and one of these awesome table cut check glass beads. We're going to stack those up. We're going to put those on an eye pin. So I'm going to grab an eye pin really quickly. Or you can do, a, you know, a piece of wire or whatever, whatever you, ever works for you. Let's see. Do I have any different... I hope I didn't miss any good gossip the last minute because my AirPods decided to shut down. <laughs> no, you're good. We were totally talking about you, though. No. <laughs> <laughs> In the one minute. <laughs> I told him all your secrets while you were gone. <laughs> all right. So we've got an eye pin here. I'm going to open up that eye pin with a twist. I'm going to thread that onto the jump ring that has all of our little beaded chains on it. And I'm going to thread on our bird. And then I'm gonna thread on our table cut bead. And if you've got a long enough uh, piece of wire, you can do a wrapped loop. I'm just gonna do a simple loop because I don't have a whole lot of wire here. Can we talk about how cute that bird is for a second, please? I know that's why he needed. He had to be. He had to be the focal. He there was there was like, no other choice. It was like my dream for that bird. It's just uh, people perched right in the center. Because he's the star. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to roll that. That match had like an AB finish on one side. I'm trying to remember which with that. Yeah. On the other side, maybe. Oh, yep. Yeah. He has that really cool kind of color shift going on. So awesome. I love, I love this check shape. We got a few colors of it in the shop, but that one really stands out. They're super cool. So there's our focal. Okay, the focal is, is done and you guys are not going to get yours done as quickly as I did mine because I cheated and had a lot of mine already ready. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> but the next thing we're going to do is we are going to make another beaded strand or a beaded chain with our carnelian beads and we're going to use some more of those simple loops. I know you guys are going to are, are never going to want to do simple loops again, or you're going to uh, master them. So it's either going to be one of the two. 
just don't come after me. Um, and we're going to add a little bit of length to this with some chain. So we are going to use 12 of the carnelian beads. This one's already done for you. Uh, this one, six of them are done. So we're going to do six of them and then we're going to add our piece of chain. And this is going to be our bottom strand of our necklace. Now remember, it's a two strand necklace. So we're working on this bottom strand right now. So we're just going to do the exact same thing with our car carnelian that we did with the others. So we've got each one of these little beads is going to go onto an eye pin. And we're going to do more simple loops. I rated the candy stash. <laughs> what you eating? <laughs> well, you know, saltwater taffy. <laughs> Yum. Oh my gosh. R we got right this, like, go what? ahead. No, go ahead. What were you saying? <laughs> I mean, it's not important. <laughs> we got this like big bag as a test batch because we wanted to do it for the, I think for the July box yeah. as the candy with the beach theme. But then we got the sample of the mail. And the, the flavor was not approved by the, by the office. <laughs> so now we have this giant bag of root beer saltwater taffy. And I oh love my it. gosh. <laughs> Yum. That sounds I really good. I think I'm the only one who eats it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you have to really like root beer to eat root beer taffy or to eat root beer suckers. That's. I always so end good. up with all of the root beer suckers and the, Those are um, good. I know, and the root beer jelly bellies, like nobody else in my house will eat them, but I will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, we end up doing Werther's for the box. I thought folks tend to like the Werther's. Yeah. I don't know. I'm missing my peppermint, so. Oh, this, the buttermints? Yes. Oh, those you are so good. need to bring back the buttermints? Mm-hmm. It's my favorite. Okay. What were you going to say about candy? Um, oh, so <laughs> in hardware wired before this, uh, I was on a tangent about how I haven't had time to eat lately because I just haven't. My schedule is so crazy. Um, and we got done with hardwired and I was getting ready for this class and Kathy sent me a message and she was like, I hope you found a snack. <laughs> and I was like, um, yeah, candy corn. And she just gave me the eyes. I'm like, I know that's not real food, but you did say snack. And that's all I had time for. So I had some candy corn for dinner tonight. That was, <laughs> I, I did. I promised her that I would eat an actual like sandwich or something after the class. But yeah, candy corn is what is getting me through candy corn and Gatorade is what's getting me through the day today. So, all right. So we're going to just keep going like we did with these. We're just going to open and close each one of our loops that we've made. Right. So we we're doing 12, six of mine were already done. So I, I did cheat a little bit, but we didn't want to keep you guys here for hours making loops. You got to, you got to infuse like the magic of TV a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like that you open the oven you have like this beautiful casserole <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of like what you're doing exactly yes 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 like you still know how to make the casserole but you don't have to sit there for 20 minutes while the casserole <laughs> <eat it 400 laughs> <degrees>. exactly <laughs> all right so this one i'm going to connect it to the part of this that i i did beforehand so with the magic of tv we have a strand ready to go <laughs> <laughs> and we do have some chain here so i'm gonna put the chain on the ends and let me let me show you how <coughs> long this chain is because i'm gonna be sure that if you want to make it exactly the way i made it that you've got so it's two inches of chain goes on each end now you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to you can always make adjustments but just in case for those who wanted to make it exactly this way you, you need about two inches of the chain. And you'll see this is another one of those situations where I'm using this chain um, as a way to not crowd this with our next strand in our necklace. So this kind of helps. It also gives it a little extra length too so that it'll hang at the length that I want it to. So you get your two 
two carnelian beaded chains ready to go. And oh, I got see the same narrowing technique by yeah. the connection point. Exactly. All right, so now all of this is gonna come together with a jump ring. And I'm using just a twisted jump ring. You can use a plain jump ring. You can use a decorative ring. You can use whatever you want to as your connection here. Um, but I'm gonna open that up. I'm gonna thread on my bird. And then I'm gonna thread on the end of each one of my beaded chains. And then I'm gonna close that back. All right, so our bottom strand of our necklace is done, okay? So now I can take all of this and I'm gonna sit this to the side. Because we don't need this right this second. We're gonna work on the next part of our necklace. The next part of Amazing. our necklace- Amazing, I already love it. <laughs> is, I know it, it looks beautiful by itself. And it, I could have gotten away with it, but like I, I wanted to add all of these other beads and who doesn't love a multi-strand design? So, all right. More so is more exactly yes <laughs> so for this one we're going to do just simple stringing we're going to use some crimps we're going to use some bead stringing wire we're going to use some wire guardians and basically we're going to put all of our table cut beads onto a strand we're going to put one of the clover beads in the middle so i'm going to divide these up really quickly and then we're going to get our our bead stringing wire ready just want to Lay all these out just so that I make sure I have an even number on both sides. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to take some bead stringing wire here and that ready to go. Is it a Sire Lovecraft class if we don't go over basic crimping technique and simple loops? Just to make right. Sure we are all how. We are all on the same page here. Exactly. Well, those are the building blocks of all your jewelry making. So super important to know how to do both of those things. All right. So I'm going to take my bead stringing wire and I'm going to take a crimp and I'm going to thread that onto the end and I'm going to take a wire guardian and I'm going to thread my wire through the wire guardian up through and then down through and then down through my crimp. Now I'm going to put Sam on the spot. Sam, why do we use a wire guardian? Absolutely. Would love to answer this question. Yay! So Sam might not personally use wire guardians because he lose, <laughs> he, 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 anything that's that small, he doesn't keep track of. But <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> but a, a, we got to back up to the wire itself is steel cables that is that are then usually in like some sort of nylon coating going mm -hmm. around them to protect them. Like and there's a whole bunch of steel, tiny cables that you do not want to get exposed to the elements if you can help it. So exactly. we use the, how am I doing teacher? Yes, um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we can use the wire guardian as another barrier. So this is the point where the wire is going to be rubbing the most and mm -hmm. where it's going to be wearing down the most. So if we put it through the wire guardian, it will, it will take the brunt of the wear and the rubbing and last a lot longer. Is yes. Yay. Look at you go. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I get for watching Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> so let me just say, first and foremost, it is totally okay if you don't use wire guardians. Not everybody has to use them, uh, but they are uh, one of the ways, just like Sam said, it's a great way to, um, to lengthen the life of your design for sure. Um, but it's not super duper necessary. So don't feel like, oh my gosh, I don't have wire guardians. What am I doing? I'm doing things. You're not doing anything wrong. Wire guardians are, um, I don't want to say that they're new, but they've not been around forever. Um, and, you know, we're glad that they exist, but it's not a have to. It's not a deal breaker. It's just an additional, um, uh, you know, security for your design. So Use them, don't use them. It's totally up to you. I like them just because I tend to be very hard on my jewelry. Um, but again, it's up to you. So I'm just stringing, by the way, not doing anything special here. I put half of my table cut beads on one side. I'm going to put one of these little black beads on, and then I'm going to thread on my clover bead. And then I'm just going to repeat that. So I'm going to do small black bead and then the rest of the table cut and then we're going to crimp the other end 
and I will walk you through that crimping process. All right, just check. We have 14 of the of the version two of this kit available. So I'm going to put that link once more in the comments in case anyone would like one. All right. So I got all my beads on here. This is going to make a beautiful second strand to our necklace. It's obviously a little bit shorter than the bottom strand, which is exactly what we want because we like that tiered look for the necklace. We're going to thread on our crimp and then again, our wire guardian. So we're taking the wire up through the wire guardian, down through the wire guardian, and then back down through the crimp. So when your wire is in your crimp, whether you're starting or finishing your strand, you want to be sure that your wires are not crossing inside that crimp. Uh, you definitely want to look down inside there or you, you kind of get a feel for it after you've done it for a while. You can tell um, how those wires are sitting inside there. I've done it so many times. I, I don't look very often anymore. Um, but you want to be sure that those wires, the bead stringing wire is running parallel inside your crimp. I use crimp tubes just as preference because there's more surface area. So I find that it's easier for me to crimp. You use a crimp tube, you're going to use a crimp bead. Either one makes no difference. The process is going to be exactly the same, starting with, of course, those wires running parallel and not crossing inside there. Because if those wires are crisscrossing each other and then you crimp, you're actually going to crimp the wire itself, and that is going to cause, obviously, some breakage in that nice nylon coating um, that, that Sam was talking about. So make sure those wires are running parallel, and then you're going to bring your crimper tool in, and we're going to put it into the back notch. It's the one that looks like the macaroni has that tooth coming down. When you squeeze this, the tooth that comes down is going to further separate those wires inside that crimp. So place it in there and then give it a squeeze. And you'll even be able to see those wires are not touching inside that crimp. You can see how much space is, is in there. And that tooth really does kind of further separate. It really pushes each one of those wires up against the wall of the crimp on either side to keep them completely separated. So then you're going to turn it sideways and you're going to place it into the front notch of the crimper tool. And then you're going to give it a squeeze. And all that's going to do is really, it just tidies it up. There, it, there's nothing technical about that part other than it just makes your crimp smaller. So it just kind of disappears in the design. And then you're going to come in with your cutter tool and trim off the excess wire. You don't have to tuck it. You don't have to run it through beads. You don't have to do any of that. If you have crimped properly, you don't have to have any of that extra security by running that that wire. And honestly, when you run the wire through, you know, the whole design again, you're you're not really saving it from breaking. If anything, right. you're kind of stiffening up the natural drape of the bead stringing wire when you double it up like that. So just some things to consider, because I know that when a lot of us very first start making jewelry, those are some of the beginner techniques that we use that end up not really doing us any favors. Um, we think we're doing right and we end up realizing later on that we're not. So it's, I always kind of strive to teach everybody that in the beginning because nobody taught me those things. You know, I had to figure all yeah. that stuff out on my own. All right, so we have our second strand ready to go. And now we're ready to kind of bring all of this together. Now I'm going to use some um, faux suede lace. You use leather, you use whatever you want to, to bring all this together, but I'm going to use just some flat suede. Okay. And I've got a piece here that is, looks like mine's about 12, 12 to 14 inches, kind of just depending on what you want. What you're going to do with it, though, is you're going to fold it over. So you need to be sure that, like, if you want six inches of this, you're going to need 12 inches of it to start with because you're going to fold it over. Mm -hmm. um, and we are going to, let me show you the, the side that's already done. So we're going to fold it over and we're going to attach, we're, we're going to fold it over a jump ring. And then we're actually going to slide three jump rings down and this is serving a couple of purposes. One, it just looks kind of cool. But number two, it uh, is holding those two pieces of the suede together so that they don't separate and make like a big open loop. 
I know it seems weird. It's just three jump rings, but it, it makes a world of difference. If you don't want to do like an overhanded knot here because it's too chunky, you can always slip a couple of jump rings over your double strand and it'll keep everything nice and compact. I'm going to show you an alternative to this when we make the bracelet, but for now, this is what we're going to do. So we're going to take our suede and like I said, we're going to fold it in half. We're going to need a jump ring. So I'm going to bring in my jump ring. I'm going to bring it to the middle, get my two ends together here. And now I'm going to take three jump rings. And I'm going to slide those jump rings over the ends of the suede. Do they have to be small enough so they stay at the end? Yeah, you want to be sure that they, um, they're, they're big enough to accommodate your cord, but small enough to not slip off the end. Otherwise you're going to, you're just going to lose them or they're going to, they're going to drop down into your beaded parts of your necklace. Mm -hmm. So, okay. yeah. And honestly, I kind of prefer using oval jump rings for this, but I didn't have any on hand. The oval jump rings really, oh, smart. they work really well for this kind of technique. So I'm just going to slide those down and that's just going to kind of keep my jump ring down here at the bottom and it's going to keep my suede nice and tidy. Okay. You can always right. put like a dot of glue in that too, couldn't you? Yes, absolutely. You can, and you can put the glue in the suede, like in the middle of the suede and slide these over, or you can do the glue on the top and slide these over. If you use a glue that'll work on metal. So yeah, you got options there for sure. Okay, so each one of these is going to attach <clears throat> to the ends of our necklace, and then I'm going to finish off the ends. So I'm going to come in here very carefully, and we're going to bring in the first strand of our necklace here, and we're going to thread on chain end of our chain on one end whoops and then the wire guardian on our stringing piece and we're going to close that and then we're going to do the same thing over on the other side with another piece of suede that's been folded in half okay, so you're going to open thread on your chain Well, maybe. There we go. And then we're going to thread on our wire guardian and we're going to close. Okay. So ultimately we brought the two strands together. Now I want to show you before I finish off these ends, you can see how that chain, see how the chain, number one, it's adding length, but number two, it's keeping my beads from crowding each other out in this section where the two strands are coming together. So it's just like the jump rings in our tassel. The strand of chain here is ultimately keeping everything from being just like a clumped up mess, right? And then the beads start when the two strands really kind of fully start to separate. So same kind how, of technique how did, here. How? How did you tie that so perfectly on the necklace? <laughs> Wait, what? What are you talking about? Like, how did I? You must you must have planned this like in reverse of like how much chain you're gonna need, like yeah. just to get because it literally separates at the perfect moment. Yeah, it was trial and error. It's it really is kind of trial and error just to kind of figure out the sweet spot. So what I do a lot of times is I'll lay I'll lay the stringing section or whatever my top strand is out first, and then what you're looking for is that opening. So you bring in your second piece and you just kind of want to slide it up and see like, where's that going to be? And then measure out your amount of chain. So you were going to lay it all out flat first and then kind of just determine how much chain it's going to take. Um, and it really is kind of trial and error. Sometimes it's a little too long. Sometimes it's a little too short, but if you'll lay it flat and start with the with the stringing part or whatever your top strand is. It doesn't even have to be the stringing part. Whatever that top strand is, um, and then slide in your bottom piece to just kind of get an idea. It's it's a little bit more helpful. 
Um, but if you're curious, again, that's two inches of chain there. So you, you don't even have to do, you don't even have to guess. You can just cut two inches of chain because I told you to. <laughs> so. As we said last week, do what Sarah says. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> All right. So to finish off the ends of the necklace now, you guys, my cord oh, end so is pretty. antique brass. It's not copper. I apologize. I didn't have any copper ones that I could find when I was putting this together. This is a tiara cast cord end. Um, you just use a little bit of glue, some hypo cement and a toothpick and you slide your strands in there. And then you can very gently squeeze this down um, to finish off your ends. Mine does not match. It needs to be copper. It's not. Uh, just, just don't look at it. <laughs> we forgive you. I also feel so silly for not. I just got those into the shop and feel so silly for not putting those on the website for today. But I will get those on like sometime next week because those are awesome cord ends. They really are, and I love that they're they're textured and they come in all the metals. Like they're awesome. So and they're perfect for suede. So you're just gonna take your two ends of your suede, okay, and then you're going to, like I said, you're gonna put your glue. Little, I put the glue inside the cord end and then I slide my cord ends in. Now, the one that I have in my hand, I completely destroyed because I had to pull the cord ends out of it because I didn't realize that I needed to show you guys how to do this. Um, so this one is mangled and it's not going to work, but basically that's all you do. I'll show you on the bracelet. Okay. So, um, again, you want yours to match. Mine does not. You're going to slide your cord ends in there, let the glue dry, and then you're going to put your hardware at the end, which is just a jump ring for both sides and then a clasp. Okay. And so your necklace will be finished. Your necklace is done, done, done. I'll show you what it looks like on the bust when we get done, but we're going to put together a bracelet really quickly, like super quick. And then, then I'm going to show you the earrings um, because they're pretty self-explanatory and then we'll be finished. Okay. So I'm going to sit the oh, necklace to the Lord. side, sit this over here. Okay, and now we're going to put together a really quick bracelet. The bracelet is also suede, uh, where we've done the same thing. Okay, some more of these really cool cord ends from Tierra Cast. It's a piece of suede that's been folded over. Now, instead of using jump rings for this, uh, because I don't have gravity to hold this because it's a bracelet, my jump rings would travel too much. So instead of using jump rings, I've just bundled around the wire, or I'm sorry, around the suede with some wire. So that's what we're going to do. But we got to put our little focal together first. So the center of our bracelet is our little hummingbird that I absolutely love. So I put mine on a head pin and did a wrapped loop. You can do a simple loop. It's whatever you want to do, but you're going to need a head pin regardless to get this guy attached well, to the bell. Cute. So, so cute. And I've got two carnelian beads and two of the little black beads left over from my beads. And I'm going to use a piece of copper wire. So I'm going to use a piece of 20 gauge copper okay and i'm going to do a wrapped loop on one end so i'm going to come down on the wire and i'm going to give it a bend okay i'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and i want a large loop because i'm gonna uh, i need to be able to accommodate the um the suede here so i'm coming back on the pliers a little bit go up and over Take the pliers and rotate those. Take the wire over to the other side. Now for this one, since this one's already done, I'm going to just slip this in here. So I'm just going to, and you don't have to do this if you're, obviously you're not going to have yours pre-done. Um, you can do both wrap loops first and then just fold your wire over. But we're improvising because, you know, saving time here. And then I'm going to use my bent chain nose pliers because... I can hold everything out of the way, including the tip of the pliers. And we're going to do three wraps on our wire. Come in with my cutter tool and trim off. Okay. I'm going to thread on one of the carnelian beads, the black bead the bale with our hummingbird and then just repeat and you can do these either way you can do the carnelian on the inside and the black on the outside it's whatever you want to do okay and then i'm going to do another wrapped loop 
So chain nose pliers, bending the wire, round nose pliers coming in again, kind of back here towards the back, up and over. Rotate the pliers, take the wire over to the other side, and then we're going to wire wrap. And I'm going to come in with my cutter tool and trim off. Why okay. is it the cutest little bracelet, Sarah? I know. Like, just and, a few cute little beads is so, mm -hmm. it's so genius. And then if you if you don't like it straight, since it's wire, you can kind of give it a little curve to make it fit your, your wrist better if you want to. Just give it a, a little curve there. And then we're going to take our suede. Our suede piece is eight inches long. So I fold it in half. It'll be four inches. And you make your adjustments because everybody's bracelet size is going to be a little bit different. But I'm just going to loop it in the middle, that wraps loop, right? And I'm going to come in and put on my cord in. So again, just like with the necklace, you're going to put your little, little bit of glue on a toothpick inside there. Stop that dogs are acting crazy and then you're gonna you're gonna tuck your or you're gonna push your cord ends inside there and then of course give them a little squeeze i am not gonna fight with this one but that's what you're gonna do <laughs> oh my goodness so use a toothpick to help it get in with and put the glue in as well or when you yeah put the glue you, in? so the toothpick is gonna help oh. get you get the glue on the inside and then you just push the cord ends in there um, and then you can squeeze them with your nylon jaw pliers to, you know, to, to squeeze the cord end over the uh, ends. But it'll fit just like that. But down here, like I said, since we can't put jump rings on here because they would travel around because it's not hanging. So uh, they wouldn't stay in place. We're going to just bundle a little bit of wire. So the leftover wire from um, where you were doing your wraps loop earlier and you just want to cut like a two or three inch piece of wire all you're going to do is I, and I always start in the middle of my wire I don't know why you don't have to you can start at the end I just find this a little bit easier but I'll cut my wire place it across the cord and then I just kind of bundle and it's it's messy you can do it nice and neat if you want to but I, I don't I generally just kind of make like a messy <laughs> you and know pretty. yeah and i'll do a couple of wraps around with the top and then a couple of wraps around with the bottom until it kind of looks like i want it to look and then i just trim off the excess so do you kinda... do you just kind of go back and forth between like doing a lark's head knot and doing something like this yeah it really is just kind of up to you like what you want to do and how you want it all to look i wanted this to kind of mimic the necklace so i didn't do a lark's head knot but you could have just as easily on the necklace done a lark's head knot and then done the same thing with the bracelet um i just used the wire to kind of mimic the jump rings that we had yeah um, it also but, ties in that like the whole metal yeah piece of this um kit which is really nice but yeah, a lark's head knot would work just as well and just add a little dab of glue to it and you're good to go. Uh, sometimes I do a knot like an overhanded knot, but it tends to kind of make a chunky, you know, I don't know. Sometimes it's just too much for a design. So it really just kind of depends on how I'm feeling. But that's basically it. Your bracelet is really simple. You don't have to have a whole lot going on because the hummingbird is the star of the show here. You have your little pop of colors here to kind of accent it. But more than anything, it's just a really great little piece that you can wear by itself. Or you can stack this up with some of your other favorite bracelets. So it looks really, really good. You're just going to add your hardware to the ends. Uh, the cord ends already have a loop. So you just add your jump rings and um, a clasp and you're good to go. That is so cute. It is, and it's you know it's light. I would wear I would wear that in a heartbeat, like absolutely. I gotta oh, make yeah. one of these. Yeah, they're super cute, easy to wear. Doesn't you know it doesn't weigh anything, and it's still got really beautiful beads on it. And that hummingbird is just really like he's the star, as he should be. He's fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. You're, you're finally gonna get me to get my leather out. It's been a while. Yes, you have got to. You've got to. 
especially with fall coming, like mm -hmm. all of the neutrals and yeah. And leather is huge this season. I was reading last night about what the fall fashions are for this year and leather, everything is in. So you have no excuses. <laughs> I ordered, I ordered some samples. So I'm trying to, cause I'm, Phil has been asking for the shop for years. So I, I just ordered some samples and I'm yeah. just like praying that I love, that I like them. Cause I, yeah. I refuse to bring one in that I do not like the quality of. Exactly. Yeah, I'm kind of picky about mine too. So to finish this off, I just did some really simple earrings with some of these clovers because they're just so pretty. I love them. They're beautiful all by themselves. So I just put them on a head pin and cut like an inch of chain and just add an ear wire to them. Now you could do whatever kind of beaded, you know, goodness you want to do. There are still some beads left over. You could bead up, you know, any kind of earring that you wanted. But the necklace is really like, for me personally, the necklace is like the star of this set. So I wanted to keep everything else kind of understated, but it's still all cohesive and goes together really well. So we've got a lot going on with the necklace, but then the bracelet and the earrings are maybe just a little less, but still, you know, still have all the colors and the metals and everything going on. And you can work that up super, super easy um, with just, you know, some wire. And you don't have to do a wraps loop. You can do a simple loop. You don't even have to do the chain. You can just do, um, you know, a wraps loop and add an ear wire to it. And, and they're beautiful just like that. I just added that because I like long earrings, but that's just me. Yeah. I know um, so many folks who like the single bead earrings, like that yes. one charm, one bead, that is their style. Yeah, and there's and they're beautiful. I mean, it, they're cla they're classy, you know? Uh, I'm a little crazy, so I tend to <laughs> make like shoulder dusters sometimes or like huge things, <laughs> wear like door knocker <laughs> earrings, but I mean, you know. <laughs> you, you are who you are. That's right, exactly. Okay, I'm gonna turn you around so you can see this necklace on the bust because it does not do it justice to be laying flat at all. Like you've got to really see this hanging to to really kind of appreciate this the double strand of it. So put this on the bust here. Of course, for mine, I'm just tying the cord just so that I can show you, but. Because it is longer than this bust, but again, we're improvising a little bit here so you can see. So oh you've got gosh. the tassel, the, the, that bottom strand is nice and long. And then the top strand is right about like an 18 inch necklace. So it's not like choker, like it looks on the bust here. It's a, it's a bit longer. This overall is a pretty long necklace, um, mm -hmm. but you can adjust both of those things. You can... You know, you can change the length of this however you want to by just kind of shortening or lengthening that piece of suede. So it's gorgeous. It actually the whole piece is color blocked. Yeah. You, like in layers going up. I don't think I've seen that. The, yeah. The, 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 you have to like sometimes I've like to sit with Sarah to like really see <laughs> understand the genius. And you, it just starts to hit you <laughs> like a real like a big old ice like ice ball. So we got. The whole black section, I'm like, not, this is not me explaining the design to you, but this is me explaining to everyone. <laughs> the whole section of like metallic and black at the bottom. And the bird is kind of its own like mini color block section. And then yeah. the bright orange accent or orange section of the carnelian. And then you go back to the color blocking of the black. I've yeah. never thought to structure a piece going up and down. Yeah. I've only thought of color blocking like within the length of one strand. Yeah. Genius. I love that you pointed it out. Oh my gosh. I, like I'm, I'm a no joke. I kind of have chill bumps because the whole, this entire design was inspired by some color blocking that you did. When was what? it? Oh, yeah. on the May box, the May box color blocking. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Oh, I love color blocking. I'm going to do that. But, and you're right. So vertical color blocking is like, Turns out that's kind of my jam. Like I, I get that. Whereas if you do it's like, it, it's like making an outfit. <laughs> yes, but if you do it this direction, it really stumps me. Like I get it and I can do it, but sometimes I struggle with it. But if you do it this direction for whatever reason, like my brain gets it. So <laughs> yeah, this was absolutely inspired by your color blocking. Um, and I love that you, I love that you got that because like. I didn't say anything. It's just kind of the way it is. <laughs> what do you think inspired my color blocking? Of this 
You know who it is. Danielle, right? Yeah, of course. Of course. Of course. Yeah. She's like the color block queen. So, yeah. Yeah. I love it. We just have the best little circle of wonderful Agreed. design friends. We really do. But, yeah. And then I'll hold up the earrings for you. I mean, they're just... These kind of disappear in my hair because of the color, but anybody else can can totally rock these. Redheads, mm, you might want to add another pop of color just so that they don't get lost in your hair, but they're awesome. Like, they're so pretty. They're just simple, and you don't have to make them crazy to, to be beautiful. What is it I say? Your beautiful piece of jewelry does not have to be a representation of every skill you've ever learned. Sometimes, I always say more is more, but sometimes... Less is, is, I apologize for my friend never, here. Never. He insists that he, he, feel, he feels like he needs to sit in my lap right now. I'm sorry. He's a lap dog, obviously. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> if a big dog does not come sit in my lap, I am sad. Like, I'm like, which way do you not sit on the lap? Uh -uh. He always wants to come at the, like, the worst moments, though. He's like, hi, mom, I'm here. I know you're live, but that's okay. Oh, my God. This has been my favorite hour ever. Um, <laughs> so let's wrap up. So, folks, do not forget to check out Sarah. She is amazing. You should follow her YouTube channel. Hit that little bell notification on her YouTube channel. She has an archive of, like, 100 plus, I think, videos now. <laughs> that so, you went through not too long ago. <laughs> oh, I scrolled through them with Sarah on the phone. <laughs> Giving all my commentary is like, oh, interesting. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> I was curious, like, which ones? Like, some of her, some of your videos have gotten like, like, got a lot of attention. It's amazing. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, fast. It's like, so, like, what, what catches folks? Like, some of your like simple te techniques, I think, draw like, a, like a maybe like a more more beginner crowd on YouTube. Yeah. And then some of your like more complex projects are like showstoppers and like get people to like. Take a, take a peek at those. So it's very fun yeah. to scroll Sarah's archive on the Sarah Lovecraft Designs, right? Yep. YouTube channel. Um, and the more you watch her videos, the more you support her. So watch Absolutely. all of them. <laughs> make sure you watch the ads if you can. <laughs> so yeah, I always try to like let the ad play for because sometimes they give me a 50 minute ad. And so I try to watch the yep. ad for like a few minutes and then I'll click skip. And I'm like, all right, that was enough. Here we go. Yep. Yeah, me too. <laughs> me too. <laughs> Absolutely. And then if you want to... And then the other great way to support Sarah is to check out her Etsy shop where she releases kits each Friday. Mm -hmm. And I think you have kits available from today and last Friday's I saw if you yeah. want to check those out. And then you can check out, there's a video that's already available. So when you get your kit, you can make the, the piece immediately. You don't have to wait like for this one, we released the kit beforehand. Sarah does the opposite. So you have immediate instant gratification when you get your package, Yeah, which is fun. Yeah. Um, what else? Okay, that's is that anything else you want to add to on your end of things? No, I think you covered everything. Yeah, you got it all. Just join my Facebook groups if you haven't already, for sure. And those of you who are here from my Facebook groups, if you're not part of Sam's Facebook groups, you need to be for sure. Come, yeah, come on over, come over to Gem Chat. We love, yeah, we love hanging with everyone there. Let's see. For the Sam's Beach Shop side of things, I'm leaving town tonight, so I'm actually you won't you maybe won't hear from me actually. For a few days, I'm actually going to take a little bit of a vacation. Um, Jesse and Sarah, oh my God, Jesse and Sarah, Jesse and <laughs> Rachel are going to do Tuesday sale, which is Purple's Day or Purple Steel's Day as part of like our summer of fun deals. So definitely come on Tuesday for that. If you like a deal, if you like purple, I hope to see you there. Actually, you'll see Jesse and Rachel there. <laughs> um, and then I'll be back. On Thursday, I'll actually be joining technically from Beadfest because I'm going to stop by Beadfest Thursday, Friday, and try to go live on for our Friday class from Beadfest. I might try to steal someone and do a class with them. I don't know. We'll see what happens. Meredith's going to be there, so maybe I could do something at the Beadalon table. I don't know. I'm going to have fun. Yes. Um, but I'll be there. I'll tune in for the Thursday sale with Rachel. So definitely lots to check out. You can stay in the loop by being on our email list and on our text list at joinsamsbeadshop.com. Other than that, we've got some new kits at the shop. Also, I we don't tend to do a lot of kits. We don't, Sarah knows how to make kits. We are just starting to do some kits. 
So our next one is actually a week from two weeks from today. We're, we're doing our class with Danielle. So that's our Owl of the Earth, Owls of the Earth kit that you can't really see here, but Jesse has a beautiful photo on the website. Yes. I think we have three left of those. Wow. <laughs> so if you want one, now's your chance. And then we released a kit on Wednesday. That is, I'm very excited about that. I haven't really showed folks yet. There are little Softlex kits. So exciting. Softlex Customer Appreciation Week. So those come in. Each kit makes two bracelets. This beautiful technique that uh, Rachel put together. And so if you wanted one of those kits, those are also on samsweetshop.com. And then don't. And then Sarah's site is separate. At, her Etsy shop is 13 Crows, where you can find her kits. So I hope that I offer some clarity to all of this. <laughs> um, Sarah and I will probably get together soon to do like a August fun, I'm hoping. Because yeah. I, I really like the August box and I hope Sarah does too. I just um, got it today. I haven't opened it. I just got it today though. Oh my gosh. I, know, I'm <laughs> I think that's everything. We covered it. So let's go ahead and sign off. Thank you so yes, much, Sarah. Sarah. Thank you for having me, Sam. Thank you, everybody out there. It's been, it's been fun, as always. This has been a joy, Sarah. A true joy. And please give Albert a hug for me. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> you know I will. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.